Welcome back to the channel guys. If you're new here, my name is Aral Tasher and I'm a remote UX engineer based off in Orlando, Florida. Today's video is yet another long overdue request from my IG family. As some of you might know, I've been coding on Unix based systems ever since I've learned how to code. And for about a decade as a UX engineer, I've used Unix machines to design and develop in my professional career. When I wanna do real life reviews on Windows machines and give you guys my authentic feedback on this channel, WSL has been a clutch for setting up my dev environment on Windows PCs and getting to work without interruption. So today I'll walk you through how I set up WSL2 and other dev environment features like DSH, Homebrew, and Note on my Windows machines. And if I'm being completely honest, this video is more like a reference video for myself to come back in the near future when I want to set up a new PC. Quick FYI, I lost some of the recordings of my installation halfway through, so I've re-recorded my steps on another machine. So if you notice a change in my terminal, background, etc., it's because of that. The steps are still in order of how I've done it in both devices. And you can find all the website URLs and commands I use down in the description below. Anyways, let's get into it. All right, guys, so before we get started with anything, I just want you to show, see what version I'm running on on my Book 3 Ultra right now. I would make sure that I was I'm at least running this version or anything newer, depending on when you're watching this video, just to make sure that everything runs smoothly. Once you do that, go ahead and search for Turn Windows Futures on the search bar down below and scroll all the way down to find Windows Subsystem for Linux and click on that. Once you do that, your computer is gonna need to restart. Pause the video and go ahead and restart your computer. Once that's done, go onto the Microsoft Store and search for the Ubuntu version that you wanna download. I've gone ahead with the just the Ubuntu app on here. You can go ahead and download the Ubuntu 18.04 or the Ubuntu 20 version 20. Um, once that's downloaded, go ahead and start Ubuntu. You might run into an error that says WSL2 requires an update to its kernel component. If so, follow that link that's on the error message, or you can just click the link below in the description, which will take you to the Microsoft's page. Um, go ahead and download WSL2 Linux kernel update package for x64 machines there. This will take a few minutes to, once that's downloaded, go ahead and install that. And once that's installed, go ahead and try to run your Ubuntu. Now you'll see that it's actually trying to install Ubuntu on your system. This will take a few minutes too, and then it'll ask you to create a user. So go ahead and write a username and a, create a password for it too. And once you do this, now you essentially are running WSL and have an Ubuntu version. But just to be sure, you can go ahead and start PowerShell as an admin. And you can do WSL-L-V to see what version that you're running. So you can see that I'm running version two. If for some reason you're running version one and it's not saying two, you can do WSL-Set-Version. And then you wanna put the Ubuntu version that you're having. So I have Ubuntu. And if you install Ubuntu 18.04, you'll write down Ubuntu 18.04 and then the version, which is two that you wanted to set. And that will set WSL2 on your Windows machine. Now, as you can see, I'm already running WSL2. So at this point we have WSL installed. We have Ubuntu running. So anything beyond this point is just optional. Regardless, you have WSL running now. I'm gonna go ahead and install Hyper.js cause that's my preference for terminal. I'll go ahead and download that. So once Hyper is installed, the next step would be making sure that our default shell is running WSL Ubuntu. So search for the keyword shell somewhere below yep right here where that says shell column quote unquote and enter this in there i'll leave the command in the description as well so basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that your shell is pointing to that path and then once you do that you can just go ahead and quit hyper that way the update would kick in um, 
And once we restart it, I'm just gonna go ahead and run a quick update for the packages just in case. And then once that update is completed, I'm just gonna go ahead and install ZSH. And once ZSH is installed, you wanna go ahead and update your .bash RC file. Once you start bash, it will point to ZSH. And then you wanna go ahead and restart the terminal again. And then once you restart your terminal, you're gonna be prompted with this question. I went ahead and I went ahead and selected option two, which populates a .zshrc file for you. And then I went ahead and downloaded all my ZSH as well. I'll leave the link below down there. And then once that once all my ZSH is installed, you want to go ahead and update the .zshrc file. So here I'm actually going to update the theme for terminal just because I like a different color scheme better. I like Agnoster, I guess that's what it's called, better than the, the default one that comes in with. You can go ahead and check out all my ZSH for all available themes or any custom theme that you want to create. I just went ahead with the Agnoster, which is one of the options that's already built into all my ZSH. And then I went ahead and updated some plugins that just helps me with my workflow. I'm adding a, the Bundler node. NPM, brew, and then just another few that will just help me with overall my terminal workflow. The two that I would strongly suggest adding is ZSH auto suggestions and uh, ZSH auto complete. Those are very handy. So once that's done, once I'm done editing all that file, I'll go ahead and reload it. And it's going to throw an error because the auto suggestion is not included in the default plugins menu. So you want to download that from GitHub. So what I want to do is I want to go into the ZSH plugins directory and then clone that GitHub repository so that it will download it on my plugins. And then once I reload that, then that error wouldn't be there and you'll see the auto suggestions. And then the next step would be just going in and downloading VS code just so I can do all those edits instead of using them. I just prefer to use VS code. It's just way faster. And I'm going to eventually download VS, VS code anyway. And then once VS code is completed, the last step would be just installing homebrew. Like I said, I come from a Unix based development background, so I'm just naturally used to using homebrew. This is not a necessary step, but in case you want to just follow along with this as well. So what you want to do is pull up your terminal and then copy and paste that initial line of code that's on homebrew's homepage which will download homebrew onto your machine as well. It's going to take a few seconds to do that. And then once that's done, there are a few steps that you need to do so that uh, Linux brew runs Linux brew slash homebrew runs properly on your device. You can follow those steps. Um, I'll pull up VS code and basically what you need to do is just add those add those prompts to your dot Z profile and then add some more configs to the, your dot ZSH RC file. You can also download build essentials, which is optional, but I would suggest you download that as well.
And then I also ended up installing GCC as well, which is a good way to kind of test that homebrew is working properly. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna go ahead and download HTOP as well, which is a really cool plugin that allows you to kind of monitor all the processes that are going on on your computer. It's good for debugging or troubleshooting. I'll suggest down, like I'll highly suggest downloading it and just playing around with it. And then once Homebrew is installed, I'll go ahead and install MVM because I use node for most of my development projects and i like to use nvm because it keeps track of all the different versions of node that i have on different repositories some repositories are version locked so i'll once i downloaded nvm i need to edit my zshrc file as well so that it knows where to point for node so you want to copy that export prompt and then add that to your .zshrc file. This is where VS Code kind of kicks in. I can just write code.zshrc and then I can see the all that code and just copy paste it there easier than just running them. And once that's done, I'm just gonna pop up terminal again, check my NVM version. Yep, that's showing my NVM there. And then I'm going to try and install node now. So I'll just do NVM install node. And then once that's done downloading, I'll just run node-v. So we see that node is in there, NPM's in there too. And that's pretty much the, the basics of it. This will get me enough to get started with my projects. I'm just gonna double check on VS Code that I can also access it on VS Code too. So you can see node versions popping up there, NPM's popping up there, Ruse also working too. But yeah, this is about enough to get me started. There's a few other things that I've done for customizing my terminal and all that stuff. Leave a comment below if you are interested in checking out the color scheme or any other plugins that I'm using. But this is pretty much it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.